Antonio Persepolis, Martial Arts Odyssey. Today we're back in Selangor, that's just outside of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And I'm back with a very good crew, crew, crew Jack Ottman. And he's showing us a bit of Silat, which is the, let's say the weapons art, uh, primary weapons art of Malaysia or the Malay yes. people. Okay. And today you have a very special student with you, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. And you are from? Uh, from England and Australia. From England and Australia. We're going to hear about that and more. Talking about this weapon, and you can't really train full blast on a pot. So, uh, in the old days, we used coconut trees and banana trees. So, today, <laughs> there's this thing called a rubber. So, so, now you can hit as much by as possible like, without getting really big. Yeah? We believe in hitting something, keep striking as hot as you can. Crystal, the, 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 the common crystal that you see in many South Asian art has no block and counter. Actually, from smash. So it's one move, crack, break, destroy. Look at that. One more time, slowly. You come from the top, the kids crazy. Look, you take your hand <laughs> in my hand. Excuse me. <laughs> Alright, let's take it to the lake. Here, That's how we train it. Old days, old men would take us into the forest and start hitting trees. Yeah? So, when you use this weapon, we call it the Sao. Yeah? Same as the kind of called Sai. Yeah? Uh, this is another exciting weapon. Uh, we believe this weapon comes from the Malay world. The Malay world. Because uh, it doesn't exist in Indian arts, doesn't exist in Shaolin arts, Okinawans. All right, uh, it came. Uh, this weapon that we all believe that it was a weapon of ancient Indian the Kali. Yeah, you can see it. It's Trisula. Uh, people in Malaysia call it Trisula. We call it uh, Gabang. Uh, here we call it Teti in Malaysia. I think more brand like clan, we call it Sao. Look, Sao is anchor. Uh, in, in the, yeah. uh, the main difference about uh, the way the Silat people use it is that we do not use the one two moves. We will go in, close, trap, take all the limbs out, take the lights out, that's the brains, yeah, and destroy the body. So it's always close range fighting when it comes to the south. So like just now we just showed a uh, two tennis uh, Edwin is working on the board. Yeah? Now he's moving on to uh, the next board. Okay. Mr. Ed, um, Silat, is that a typical Australian martial art? No, no, it's like uh, that's Silat all over the world. It's, it's very rare. Very hard to find a teacher, uh, particularly inside the West. There are a lot of Malaysians and Indonesians in South uh, Australia, but very few of them. And uh, what brought you to Silo? Uh, Jack was my next door neighbour at university. Oh, really? So I've been training under Jack for about 20, about 24 years. Well, was it that was back in Australia? No, that was when I was living in England. Oh, I grew wow. up in England, went to the same university, and. Uh, 24 years later, I ended up here learning and some more with Jack whilst working inside one of the newspapers just down the road. That's wonderful. Good for you. Yeah, it's been, been, a, been a great time. So, tell me a little bit about how you feel about Silat. I mean, uh, if we think of Silat being a very Malay sort of, uh, sort of a, a cultural uh, treasure and, and maybe even tied in with uh, Muslim religions. So, you're from the West and, and, and I assume you're not Muslim? No, no. Because well, uh, after I was learning in the Salat with Jack, I also learned some Salat of uh, another guru, uh, guru Richard, who was from France and he's a teacher in Indonesia. So inside Indonesia there is less of the, the Muslim influence because they, uh, the other religions in some way uh, of the country. So I've never really regarded Salat as a Muslim art. There's certain styles, many styles that only Muslims can practice, but it's not a Muslim art, it's a, an art of the, uh, the Malay archipelago, uh, name breakers, and a lot of cultures, a lot of uh, ethnic uh, 
uh, groups and a lot of religions as well. And have you studied other more science before? Uh, not really. Uh, that would here and there, but Silat has always been my favourite. Especially primary and martial arts. Yeah, oh, okay. Twenty. Twenty-four years, I think. Well, too many more years, and I want to add up. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you think about as far as how Silat uh, yeah, spreading to the West, um, is, is it becoming more popular and, and do you think it's a good martial art for Western people? I, the, my view of, of Silat in the Western world is that it is a very, very revered art uh, inside the upper echelons of, of the martial arts. And not a lot of people at the lower ends know about it because when you went to the market last well, it's very hard to find a silat teacher and you naturally move towards uh, whatever is most popular. But uh, a lot of people as they go through uh, the, the path, the, uh, the years of experience, they begin to understand other arts as well. And that's when uh, they get to take a look at silat or are looking for it uh, aside. And go swing it. Don't worry about the body, I'm worried about the eyes. What piece is this? What piece is it now? Look here, look here. It's so horrible. Well, the basic one, you know, but no way to show it before. The long list of Filipino weapons, I saw oh, one at the end say that sting is there. I've never, I've never seen anything remotely like that in the Philippines. Everything in the Philippines now is, everything has a blade on it. And every toothbrush, <laughs> fountain pen, iPod, whatever it is, they put a blade on it. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do look inside the art, you do see a, a wonderful fighting system. And one that I think is very undiluted by the West. It's still very pure in the sense that it is, it is martial. It is about uh, life or death. It is about uh, winning at all costs. Because the loser, uh, he never regains yeah. consciousness. You don't really uh, come in second place in a knife fight, do you? No. no. So, for this, lay on this side, from range, close range, cut up. Uh, it's a it's modern Malay, southern Thai. Do you practice the hand and foot fighting as well as uh, weapons? Yes, I mean, there's different. Diff different styles have different focuses, uh, and every style uh, has got a, a degree of, of, of empty hands. Um, it may come from the fighting system, for example, uh, inside our Harambal Branta system. The core focus is the bloody the knife. So the way we use our hands and feet is very knife orientated. You know, it's very fast, there's lots of hits. Um, but there's other fighting systems that, for example, uh, would use a crisp, which is more about stabbing, it's more about power, it's more about one punch, one crisp stab will kill the opponent. Uh, and so there are different, um, different emphasis depending on the style yeah. that you come from. The feeling I get, and I've only been here a week, is that the word Sila is, Sila is to Malaysia what Kung Fu is to China. It is, that name includes a lot of different kinds of styles and arts and so it, it is. It's a very, very broad art. Uh, and it's also an all-encompassing one, in the sense that uh, many styles do embrace uh, a way of life as much as a fighting system. Uh, the way you practice your Pinto Silat does actually develop your entire life, the way you live it, not just the way you can defend yourself.